Hey guys, Walter Sorrell back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, reviewing a budget 2x72 inch belt grinder. Today I'll be reviewing the 2 by uh, 82 inch belt grinder from Vivor. Yep, you heard me right, 2 by 82. Now, didn't I just say about 30 seconds ago that this was a 2 by 72? I sure did, so hang in there. We'll sort this one out in a minute. As always, like and subscribe, hit the bell so you get notified, that's a big one, and to pick up my free PDF of tips about how to get started in knife making, check the cards and description. This is a relatively budget-friendly model from Vivor, the online purveyor of mostly Chinese tools. Uh, the Vivor grinder is aimed squarely at knife makers, but it's also going to be useful for metal fab guys, auto body folks, machine shops, all those kind of folks who work with metals. Um, the question, though, is at this price point, well, let's be honest, does it suck? All right, let's find out. Full disclosure first, Vivor did provide me with this grinder at no cost, but they didn't pay any sponsorship fee. I don't get any affiliate money from selling them, so take all of that for whatever it's worth. Let's start with the facts and figures. To start with, yes, this is a 2 by 82 inch belt grinder. That means it's made for using a grinding belt that's 2 inches wide and 82 inches long. Sometimes Vivor's ad copy is a little suspect, but in this case, it's totally accurate. When was the last time you bought a 2 by 82 inch belt in the US? Yeah, never. This grinder ships with a few 2 by 82 inch belts, but you can also run 2 by 72s with some qualifications that we'll get into later. The list price at the time of this video is about $1,000. The grinder ships with a flat platen, a 12 inch toothed rubber contact wheel, a small diameter wheel attachment that will run both 25 millimeter and 40 millimeter wheels, and a small work table. The motor is rated at 1.5 kilowatts, which they say is equivalent to a two horse motor. The grinder has variable speed control. There's also a separate transformer, which is necessary to make the VFD do its thing. I'm running the machine on a 20 amp, 120 volt single phase line, and it works comfortably there. I never tripped any breakers or had any problems on startup. That's about it for the basics. So let's get into the weeds. First, assembly. Pretty simple, thanks to the extensive one page directions. I mean, in all fairness, it is front and back. Assembly really was simple though. One thing to notice, don't do what I did and put this mounting bolt on with the nut on top. It'll eat up your belt because there's only the tiniest clearance between the bolt and the belt. Once I flipped it over, all was well. Quick time out. With gear reviews like this one today, plus tips and tricks that put money in your pocket, this channel has been helping you save money and learn more about knives and knife making for free here on YouTube for nearly 15 years. If you've been enjoying all this content and you wanna help those videos keep coming, there is a way. It's called Patreon. All my Patreon supporters at any pledge level get plans to most of my builds, knives, knife making tools, all that stuff that I make here. But more than that, you get the satisfaction of supporting something that you believe in and that helps you. So help me help you. Link in the cards and description. Thanks guys, and now back to work. Now let's attack the whole two by 72 versus two by 82 issue. China may be drowning in 2 by 82 inch belts, but I couldn't find any place in the U.S. that sells them. Now obviously I didn't look at every place that sells abrasives in the entire country, but none of the normal knife making supply or abrasive companies that I deal with have them. 2 by 72 is absolutely the standard in the U.S. for this general type of grinder. The bottom line is that you can run a 2 by 72 inch belt on this machine, but not comfortably. Why? Let me back up. On some belt grinders, each attachment 
contact wheels, platens, whatever, has a separate arm. The Vivor, however, is set up with one arm, and then the attachments are swapped out of these two mounting holes on the end of the arm. Each attachment will require a different position for the arm. In other words, it goes in and out on that shoe, and then you secure it. Fine. However, in order to run a 2x72-inch belt with either the flat platen or with the 12-inch contact wheel, you run that arm all the way back, and then it whacks into the motor housing. And even then, you still have to move the platen to the rear mounting hole, which puts the front part of the arm in front of the platen itself, blocking access and making it essentially unusable. This is a total no-go. It's fixable, however. My solution to this problem was to cut about three inches off the rear of the mounting arm. I should mention this is an extremely stout arm. Solid steel, about 40 millimeters or 1.6 inches square. Now cutting it off for me is pretty easy because I've got a metal cutting bandsaw, but if you did your mods with a hacksaw or even an abrasive chop saw, you'd be at it for a while. End result though, I now have a perfectly functional 2 by 72 inch belt grinder. The dimensions are all a little tight, but it works. Here's how you swap out the various attachments. Pretty nice 12 inch contact wheel. The wheel is well balanced, which is very important, especially at high speeds. Great for hogging material as well as for hollow grinding and forming palm swells and handles. A lot of uses for it. The small wheel attachment works fine too. There are actually two little wheels and you just slide them in and out of this little mounting gizmo. You're going to use those for finger notches in the handle, that sort of thing. You're limited to these two sizes, but they're rubber faced, which is nice, and so, you know, they really work pretty well. The flat platen ships with a graphite surface pad, which reduces belt bump and supposedly runs a little bit cooler. It's a consumable though, so it'll eventually have to be replaced, and it's kind of mushy, which is good in some circumstances, but not in others. Anyway, nothing wrong with it. If you don't like it, you can just tear it off and adjust the platen outward. Speaking of which, mine came from the factory a little bit too far in, so I had to adjust it outward so that the belt was running nice and flat on it. All the hardware is metric, so if you need to adjust anything, you'll need metric Allen wrenches. Additionally, there are ways of sort of jury-rigging a slack belt setup, including taking the platen off of the flat platen setup, but there's not really a native slack belt setup here. Now to what I consider the biggest weakness of this whole machine. It ships with a VFD, or Variable Frequency Drive, basically a variable speed control, which is great. It has some programmable features that I didn't spend a ton of time figuring out. It'll drive the grinder in both forward and reverse. So far, so good. Now, it's not mounted. It's just sitting there. And more importantly, this is the really big thing, it's not enclosed in a sealed enclosure. What this means is that in a grimy environment, which is precisely what belt grinders create in about eight seconds, a bunch of grinding dust and metal particles will eventually wind their way into the guts of the VFD. One day you'll hear a little pop as electricity arcs through all that metallic dust and that will be the end of your VFD. Now, I happen to know from speaking to guys who manufacture American-made grinders that sourcing a good metal sealed box with cooling fins and all that stuff is really one of the larger component expenses involved in making a variable speed grinder. So, I've come up with an El Cheapo solution, buying a sealed electronics box off of Amazon and mounting it inside that. This will cure the dust problem, but there is the possibility that it may start causing the VFD to overheat because there's no airflow. Now I haven't experienced that yet, but I can't tell you how it'll work running the grinder at reasonably high speeds for hours and hours on end. I just haven't used the machine quite that much yet. I've also bought a sealed box for the transformer, just haven't mounted that yet, but it should be pretty simple to do that. Speaking of speeds, this grinder has quite a large drive wheel. 
The larger your drive wheel, the faster the belt goes. In this case, I calculate a max surface speed of a little over 6,000 feet per minute, which is screaming fast. Personally, I wouldn't recommend running it quite that fast. My guess is you'd burn out the bearings on the flat platen and the small wheels if you ran it that way, even for just a little while. Now, the big contact wheel, maybe that's not the case. I don't know, but I'm not going to find out. The VFD is infinitely variable from 0 to 50. 50 watts? I do not know, but I've been running it up into the high 30s and I probably won't go much faster than that. You can do plenty of hogging even at that speed. Now snarkiness aside, it actually has various modes so you can program it to go by RPM which is the way I'll actually run it in the future. Truth is, whatever little numbers are on the front, it's all just kind of random. The point is that you want to know how much the machine will do at any given setting and that's just a matter of experience. I can say that I really leaned into this sucker and ground pretty hard and I wasn't able to bog down the motor without exerting what seemed to me to be a pretty unreasonable amount of force on the thing. As I said, no mounting gear whatsoever for the electrical components. Now if you want to give that a positive spin, it gives you the flexibility to mount everything wherever you want it. But it also means some extra work and expense. It's a little ticky tack to me. Before I got my sealed enclosure set up, I was mounting it using OSHA approved 3M green mounting brackets. Just in case you're the kind of person who needs your jokes explained, yes, that's masking tape. Okay, so once I get everything stabilized, how does the grinder work? Actually, it works great. It's got all the normal grinder stuff. The tracking wheel works just fine. It maintains good track, adjusts easily and smoothly, and you can hang the belt off the edges for grinding smooth plunge lines without any trouble. You can run it backwards without doing anything other than fiddling a little with the tracking. No problems there whatsoever. The attachment arm goes in and out of this shoe and secures with a couple of good solid metal handles. There's a pneumatic tensioner, which is pretty stiff, but works fine. I didn't find changing belts to be quite as easy as on some grinders, but it's really not anything insurmountable. There's also a smallish work table. The table is not really a joy to take on and off. It takes the previously mentioned metric Allen wrenches to put it on and take it off. It's not super big, so if you plan on doing a lot of beveling with a grinding jig, you might consider fabricating your own table. I put the grinder through its paces, grinding at slow speeds, high speeds, using all the attachments, a wide variety of belts. On this front, it was really quite nice to use, running smoothly, stably, the frame solid, all the mounting hardware seems pretty durable. Basically, you'd have no problem whatsoever making a high quality knife on this machine. From a purely functional perspective, the overall design is solid, but not exceptional. It looks like a design that wasn't made with a lot of input from knife makers. Compared to the very knife maker friendly designs from, say, Ameribraid, Travis Wirtz, some of the other newer manufacturers in the US, this just doesn't have quite the flexibility or ease of use, doesn't have as many tools, but in terms of the core functions of a modern grinder, basically grinding on a flat platen or a contact wheel, it works quite well. So that about wraps it up. Final thoughts? Look, let's be honest. If you're looking for a pro grinder for knife making and you can afford an American made high quality professional grinder, uh, an Ameribraid, a KMG, a Wurtz, a Bader, any of those things, you will not be sorry you spent the money. They're just plain better. But look, everybody has different budgets. This is a lot of belt grinder for the money. You know, it's pretty solidly made. Uh, you get several different, you know, pretty useful grinding attachments. It's quiet, it grinds well. Basically, it's got full professional capabilities. But look, everybody has different budgets. I already talked about the boxes that the VFD and the power supply come in. If you plan to use this regularly or if you just have it sitting around in a grimy shop, the speed control especially is really gonna need a containment solution or my guess is this will be dead sooner than later. So plan on spending a little more time and money on that. Same goes for making a few minor mods to make it work for two by 72 uh, grinding belts. Now look, how good is the motor? How good is the VFD? How good are the bearings? 
Only time will tell. But as a starter machine or something that's going to receive light due to use, I expect you're going to get plenty of years out of this machine. So who's this grinder for? To me, you know, it's a decent starter machine for a hobbyist knife maker on a modest but not crazy low budget. It might also be a nice addition to the shop of a knife maker who wants an extra grinder to do something real specific and save having to change attachments or belts all the time. Finally, it'd be good for light duty use in a small metal fab shop, you know, welding shop, auto body shop, any place that you're grinding metal. All in all, I gotta say, with all those qualifications, I'm pretty impressed. Seems like a pretty good value. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like what we're doing here, please subscribe and make sure that you click on that bell so you get notified of all the latest videos. Want to buy a knife from me? Check out my modern blades at tacticsarmory.com. Digging the channel? You can support our video making efforts on Patreon. You know, I've been banging away on these videos for like 10 years, so I hope you'll show some love for all that hard work. Link in the cards and descriptions. Finally, if you're interested in making Japanese swords, check out my full line of Japanese sword videos where I show how to forge Japanese swords as well as how to polish them and how to make fittings, handles, and scabbards. Walter Sorrel's Blades dot com.